Hey guys, I am recording a new episode of the Demand Better podcast tomorrow that I started with my buddy David Corona, and we are lucky enough to have a girl I went to high school with, a woman, I don't know, whatever you want to be called, Aaron. Um, lucky enough to have Erin Grace, Grace Clark, sorry, um, to be on to kind of facilitate our conversation. This is our fourth episode we are publishing and we want it to be a chance for you guys to get to know us better. So she sent a bunch of questions as kind of pre-production or however we want to think of it. And I thought I would do this video to kind of prepare for that live tomorrow, but then uh, this can be kind of something we, we use here and you guys can get to know me better and you don't have Corona wasting our time there. I'm just kidding. I love Corona. I love Aaron. I'm excited for this. So I'm going to jump into it. First question is, what is your title? Tell us uh, a little about what you do and maybe what you don't do. So my title I'm going with is, I'm a doctor of physical therapy, I can't deny that. Um, I've been running away, I, I kind of joke about some of this stuff, as I, 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 I'm, physical therapy is a term that people hear. I've tried physical therapy. Um, they have, there's a lot of negative connotations in my experience with, you take insurance, heat, stim, ice, massage, very kind of passive treatments that is not almost at all what I do. I'm very active based, um, based on my experiences and, and the kind of bridging the gap between healthcare and the fitness space. I really believe in in uh, bridging that gap and, and making sure that people have a very strong sense of empowerment. I think we're gonna get that in a few of the other questions. I haven't looked at the questions very much, but uh, my title is Doctor of Physical Therapy. I have many other certifications. I recently uh, also got my precision nutrition certification um, over the years, strength and conditioning specialist, CSCS, uh, many other ones. But the main titles I just like to go with now are Doctor of Physical Therapy because, you know, that's that was an expensive degree um, and, and definitely helped provide a lot of, of the concepts that we're talking about here. And then the other one I focused on that I like is, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still... Not fully 100% on this, but you guys tell me what you think is long-term health specialist or long-term health coach. And a lot of that has to do with my five pillars of health where we're talking about all these different concepts and we want to have a long-term view. And I only want to work with folks who, uh, it's great if you want to get out of pain and I can help you do that in 30 minutes and get you moving better in 30 minutes. We put a plan in place for the next 30 days. And then I want that to take us to the next 30 years. So that's the first question. Uh, well, a little of what I do, I, I hope that kind of covered that. What I don't do is, again, I'm not into the passive stuff. Um, and, and yeah, hopefully that, that helps and clarifies that. Uh, there's a few other questions here, but I'm, I'm going to try to knock them out. Let's see what we do. Uh, what we can do. What do you want patients to walk away from a visit with? Uh, empowerment, clear, concise guidelines of changes they can make to their new habits and and also understanding that i'm here with you on that journey all right so those are the biggest things is is i want everyone who i work with and i really hope uh that i do that and if i've ever worked with you and you didn't feel like that come back for a full refund just kidding um <laughs> but we can we can talk uh, about those concepts for sure so i want everyone to walk away with empowerment with again that sense that i'm, I'm there with you and this is a journey and that's why i talk about 30 minutes 30 days 30 years um, cause it all comes together. Lexi is excited about that. Wants to get in here. How do we connect with Corona? Uh, my buddy Dave Vainshanker, who did graduate with Aaron and myself in 2001, Brooklyn Tech. Um, he ended up connecting me to David through a football league on Randall's Island in New York City. Uh, just pick up football weekend warrior type stuff. Um, and yeah, that was, uh, the beginning of a, of a beautiful friendship that we, we've kept all these years later. Uh, that must have been 2012, I want to say, 2011 maybe. Um, but yeah, and uh, we reconnected recently a little bit more talking about, and we, we've obviously talked about a lot of the fitness concepts. Um, I've done a lot of the CrossFit type stuff. He hates CrossFit, so there's an episode on that coming up soon too. Uh, what is it about your skills, passions, and his that made coming together for this podcast a perfect fit? I think a lot of that is... Uh, again, we, we get along really well. We share a lot of the same sentiments and we were just talking about how we, we also disagree about certain things, um, but we like to approach things with a scientific lens, with an evidence-based lens, common sense, rationality, things that are missing in a lot of modern fitness and, and, and even, yeah, new science, whatever you want to call it. So 
uh, that helped us kind of come together and say, you know, we, we share a lot of the same concepts. And again, we probably agree on 97% of things. And again, he's a personal trainer. I'm a physical therapist slash personal trainer pretty much. Uh, and, and I bet that if you saw both of our methods and approaches and you watched an hour of him working with a client and an hour of me working with a client, there's going to be tons of overlap um, there. And again, he doesn't go down the, the, as much of the lifestyle stuff. And I think that's huge stuff. So, uh, that's something I'll just say is, is a separator, but you know, he has his reasons for that. And we cover up that on a few episodes, but in terms of us coming together and fitting well, I think that's a lot of it. What's the goal of the podcast? Why should someone listen to it? Again, it comes back to this. We're trying to put it in a, in a very digestible format that it is a user's guide or consumer's guide. And we just see a lot of folks going out uh, and, and the way that the industry works and partly the way people like to buy things is, again, Peloton is very easy, it's right there, but to me, it's very incomplete. And again, if you do Peloton and you love Peloton, I'm not gonna rip you away from your Peloton. However, and uh, we like to not say but, or I, I, however is another version of but, uh, if you love Peloton, I think there's a, a gap of, of your training, of your fitness, of your long-term health. Uh, as much as it's great that you're getting on Peloton or doing Zumba or doing CrossFit, but there's still gaps. There's still gaps. So uh, we want to kind of highlight and, and talk about there's no perfect profession. There's no perfect thing. But again, when we see people go to personal trainers um, and they are not getting the results they deserve, which is why we ask them to demand better, because we know there's a lot of these common problems where people are burnt out trainers are burnt out where they might not be paying as much attention or they're in a system that is designed in a way to get them, turn them through, give them kind of minimal effective dose or minimal results. Um, and so they keep coming back for more. And again, a lot of times I know people who love their chiropractor or their trainer or their physical therapist, you know, Dr. Bob is great. Um, and I'm not picking on Dr. Bob, who is someone I know here in Boulder. Um, but, you know, but at the same time, maybe there's something lacking. And, and that's where, again, we want people, we want this podcast to explore those concepts where uh, if you're working with a chiropractor, what are things you should look out for? Um, if they're not giving you active things, that's what we believe works. That's what the science pretty much shows works as much as possible. So that's what we want people to take away. Um, we want it to be a very digestible consumer's guide of things to look out for. Our first episode about personal trainers, I just talked to someone who listened to that and he said, yeah, like if there's no assessment, I never really thought about that. If there's no assessment, I should run out the door. And we stand by that. And so, uh, yeah, well, that's that's the consumer's guide that's not existent for a lot of these medical professions and a lot of these personal trainers. It's hard to get true, accurate concepts of what you should expect or what your rights are. Um, and, and so hopefully we're going we're gonna to dive down a lot of those rabbit holes. Why do you guys feel the need to enter the space, which frankly is saturated with so many people giving advice about sports, nutrition, fitness, etc.? Uh, as much as it's saturated, and, and I don't know what the statistics are, there was over a million podcasts, uh, active podcasts, I believe, uh, during this pandemic that that, that we've all kind of lived through. Um, I don't know. I, I, I dive really deep into it. I listen to a lot. I walk my dog. I listen to podcasts. I love taking in podcasts, and I just haven't heard I'm, – I'm a fan of a lot of people, but I also haven't heard um, folks talking about these, these deeper concepts – so that we can now, um, again, dive deeper and give a different perspective. I think our perspective is to call out personal trainers. I've seen a few when we're doing uh, research for each of these episodes that we've been doing um, when it comes to demand better from your personal trainer. Uh, the Mind Pump podcast has, and they're one of the most popular podcasts out there. They do have a cool episode where they go through a few things. I think they missed a few things. I think that their model is and again their production value is is phenomenal so i think that they uh they did a great job of that but i still felt like there were a few things that i wanted to dive deeper on um and that's where again uh, so hopefully corona and myself can can go down that path and you guys get that out of there i don't know what's going on here um hopefully that answers that and the last question we have here is you're not fishing for clients here you're seeking to give information free of charge why at the end of the day, again, this, these are our passions. Corona and I, again, really connected on, uh, we've been in the fitness space for a very long time, in the fitness and healthcare space. Um, and he, he ends up, again, we, we, like I said, we probably overlap so much of what we do. Um, at the end of the day, we can't see everyone. I'd love for everyone to listen to the podcast to come work with me. Sure, I'm available for that. I'm growing my business. He's growing his business. Uh, he's a very busy dude in New York City, Upper East Side. Uh, I, have, I have clients online. I have clients all over the world. Um, 
the point of putting this together is, first of all, I think we enjoy these conversations. We enjoy exploring these. And again, we really passionately believe that this information needs to get out there. I see folks, and again, if I see somebody at, at, at the local gym um, and I'm over here doing whatever I'm doing and I see they're doing stuff that I think could be better, that's a lot of my passion. I feel like people are in there putting in time and you're gonna be an hour in the gym, you're gonna get so much more return on investment because I've done the research. Corona's done the research. We see what works. What you're doing might not work. Um, and what your personal trainer, who you're putting trust in, we see that as an injustice, all right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little crazy here at the end here and say, um, I think a lot of what I've seen in the industry should be considered malpractice. Uh, you know, years later, somebody's saying, hey, we need to put do surgery on this. And I look at the situation, I'm like, no one's ever tried to like properly rehab this. They did a very basic, whatever, rubber band approach and it didn't get better, your symptoms didn't get better. So now they're gonna operate. And again, that, that's the model, that's the way it's set up. It's symptom care, it's saying x-ray, MRI, I need to see, okay, yes, no, I'm gonna cut you, no, I'm not gonna cut you. Not every surgeon is that way, but again, we see some of these, I think it's fair to call them injustice. I think it's fair to call them, uh, again, malpractice. Uh, and you go, you know, I'm not gonna start any legal situations here, but uh, I definitely don't wanna deal with that. But we see that, and again, we see loved ones, we see people we care about, we see people we've never met that we think should be, could be doing better. Um, and it's just, they're getting kind of led down the wrong path of continuing to chase symptoms. I had a little low back pain, uh, take a pill. Now we see opioid addiction is a big problem. There are so many other ways to deal with low back pain. There are so many ways to prevent it. There are so many ways to treat it properly so you don't get to a point of needing surgery. And again, like I, oof, this is a whole nother episode. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think at the end of the day, we love these conversations. We love putting in the work. Um, we want to put out something that, that down the line we can be very proud of. And that again, a lot of people will take a lot of value out of, um, that's something that I've, you know, I've posted a lot on social media over the years and I always aim to, to put something out there that people can, um, really get value out of. And so hopefully that's, that's, this is just another evolution of that where it's even more valuable. It's even more, we can reach even more people, um, between the two of us. And, and again, I think that captures a lot of, where I'm at. So I'm gonna wrap it up here, seven questions. Um, we are going live tomorrow. So if you're watching this, uh, whenever you're watching this, today is Thursday. We're going live Friday, December or something, December 10th. Um, yeah, so hopefully, um, if, yeah, if this is your first time ever seeing me watching this, uh, gives you a sense of who I am. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for you guys to check out the podcast, give us feedback rate, review, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I am excited to chat with Aaron, to chat with David tomorrow. I don't like calling him David Corona. Um, but yeah, we'll talk soon. Hope you guys got at least 1% better listening to this and hope you get a lot out of the Demand Better podcast.